Hello and welcome back. In this lesson, I will teach you how to apply subject-verb agreement rules correctly in tricky situations. These situations involve prepositional phrases or relative clauses that occur between the subject and the verb in a sentence. I'll show you how to identify the subject in situations like this so that you can avoid making the most common mistakes. As always, there is a quiz later on to test your understanding. So let's start. If you want to learn the basic rules of subject-verb agreement, watch lesson number one in this series, which is an introduction to this topic. You will find a link in the description. But to quickly recap the basics, here's a chart from the previous lesson. With singular nouns, such as monkey, boy, car, and so on, and with the pronouns he, she, and it, we add s to the verb in the present tense. Monkey eats, boy walks, he goes, she speaks, etc. With plural nouns, and with the pronouns I, you, we, and they, we don't add s to the verb. Now, I and you are not plural pronouns. It's just a rule that with I and you, we don't add s to the verb. These two rules work with all verbs except for be. The verb be has five forms. We say I am, he, she, it, or any singular noun is, and you, we, they, or any plural noun are. This is in the present tense. In the past tense, we say I, he, she, it, or any singular noun was, and you, we, they, or any plural noun were. These are the very basic rules of subject-verb agreement. So now, let's discuss some more advanced topics. Let's start with prepositional phrases. Here's an example. I want you to do this as an exercise. You see, there are two places where you have to choose between is and are. The cookies is for Amanda, or the cookies are for Amanda. And the box of chocolates is for Tom, or are for Tom. What do you think? Well, here's the answer. The cookies are for Amanda, and the box of chocolates is for Tom. But how come? Cookies is a plural noun, and chocolates is also plural. Yet we have are in the first place, and is in the second. So what's going on here? Well, with cookies, it's easy. Plural subject, so we say are. But in the second sentence, we have box of chocolates. Here we see a preposition of, and we see that it has an object, chocolates. So, of chocolates is a prepositional phrase. This phrase gives information about the box. It tells us what type of box it is. It's a box which has chocolates inside. So, the real subject of this sentence is the box. This is a singular noun. That's why we have is. The prepositional phrase is just extra information, so you can mentally block it out. Now, it's easy. The cookies are for Amanda, the box is for Tom. What box? The box of chocolates. Here's another example. A wallet with four credit cards was or were found lying in the grass. Which is correct? Pause the video and think about it for a moment. Okay, did you identify the prepositional phrase in this sentence? The phrase is with four credit cards. So what thing had four credit cards inside? It was the wallet. So wallet is the subject of the sentence. The credit cards are not the subject. Wallet is a singular noun. So a wallet with four credit cards was found lying in the grass. If the sentence was just about credit cards, we might say four credit cards were found lying in the grass. But here, since the real subject is wallet, we say was. Okay, here's the next one. Some students in my class speak or speaks French as their first language. Well, what's the subject of this sentence? I see a preposition in, so I know that in my class is a prepositional phrase. It gives us information about the noun students. So the subject here is students. This is a plural noun, so we need a plural verb that is a verb without s added to the end. So some students in my class 
speak French as their first language. Even though the noun class is right next to the verb, it's part of the prepositional phrase. The real subject is the plural word students. Here's one last example. Small business owners throughout the state have or has voiced their displeasure with the government's new tax proposal. Okay, let me explain this one a little bit. Small business owners means people who own shops, restaurants, or other companies that are small. Throughout the state means not just in one place, but in every place across the state. To voice your displeasure is a common expression. It means you're not happy with something. Displeasure is the opposite of pleasure. To voice your displeasure is to express your disappointment or dissatisfaction. This expression is used in more formal situations like this. A tax proposal is a tax plan that the government has announced. So many business owners are not happy with this plan, maybe because it's going to raise taxes on their businesses. Okay, so now you decide, have or has. Now what's the subject here? Do you see a prepositional phrase? Yes, throughout the state is a prepositional phrase because throughout is a preposition. So what does this phrase give you information about? It gives you information about small business owners. This is the subject. Within this subject, the noun is owners because the word business just tells you what type of owner. Owners of what? Owners of business. What type of business? Small business. So the real subject is the word owners, which is a plural noun. So we need a plural verb without S. So small business owners throughout the state have voiced their displeasure with the government's new tax proposal. Did you get it right? Okay, now the important question is, how do we identify prepositional phrases? Well, the first step is to know the most common prepositions in English. These are words like of, in, on, at, by, with, to, for, from, etc. You see some of these on the screen. Of course, there are many more. When you see a preposition in a sentence, it will always be part of a phrase that is a group of words of chocolates, with four credit cards, in my class, throughout the state, and so on. If such a phrase occurs before the verb in a sentence, it will act just like an adjective to give information about a noun. So identify that noun, like box, wallet, students, owners, etc. If the noun is singular, then add S to the verb. If the noun is plural, then don't add an S to the verb. If the verb is be, then choose the correct form, am, is, are, was, or were. Now just like prepositional phrases, relative clauses can also cause problems with subject-verb agreement. Take this example. This vintage watch which I received as a wedding gift from my grandparents is or are one of my most prized possessions. Let me explain the vocabulary here. A vintage object is an old object that's attractive or of high quality, like vintage furniture, vintage cars, etc. So a vintage watch is an attractive old watch that's still in good condition. The word possession means something you own, and a prized possession is a thing that's very important to you. All right, what do you think is or are here? Okay, look at the clause, which I received as a wedding gift from my grandparents. What is the purpose of that clause? What did I get as a wedding gift from grandma and grandpa? I received the watch, the vintage watch. So this clause only gives information about the watch. It gives you some details about it. So in fact, this whole clause acts like an adjective. For this reason, it's called an adjective clause. More commonly, it's referred to as a relative clause. So that means the real subject is watch. Grandparents is not the subject. The word watch is a singular noun. So this vintage watch, which I received as a wedding gift from my grandparents, is one of my most prized possessions. The verb is agrees with the subject watch. Relative clauses usually start with words like who, which, that, where, or when. These words are called relative pronouns. All right, here's another example. 
The architect who designed some of the city's biggest skyscrapers live or lives in a modest two-bedroom apartment downtown. Modest means simple. So is it live or lives? The first thing that you should notice is the word who. So you know that we have a relative clause. Who designed some of the city's biggest skyscrapers is the relative clause. It tells us something about the architect. So architect is the subject here. Skyscrapers is not the subject. Architect is a singular noun. So the architect who designed some of the city's biggest skyscrapers lives in a modest two-bedroom apartment downtown. Next one. The only books that I actually enjoyed reading when I was a kid was or were superhero comics. Stop the video and think about this one. Okay, first of all, did you find the relative clause? Actually, there are two relative clauses here. The first one is that I actually enjoyed reading and the second is when I was a kid. The first clause tells us about the books. I'm talking about books that I enjoyed reading. And the second clause says that we're not talking about now, we're talking about the period when I was a child in the past. You can have two relative clauses like this that give different types of information, but of course the subject here is books. This is a plural noun, so the only books that I actually enjoyed reading when I was a kid were superhero comics. This might sound a little strange to you because we have the word kid, which is singular. So we feel like the, the verb should be was. Because in conversation, we normally say the kid was running, the kid was playing, and so on. But the important thing is that kid is not the subject here. It's just part of that relative clause. The verb should agree with the subject of the sentence, which is books in this case. One last example. Prescription drugs, which cannot simply be obtained over the counter, require or requires a doctor's prescription in order to be purchased. The sentence means that there are certain medicines that if you want to buy them, you have to get a doctor's prescription. Over the counter means going to the store and buying something just like that. You pay money over the counter and you receive the product over the counter. You cannot do that with prescription drugs. You need a doctor's prescription. So what do you think? Require or requires? Okay, where's the relative clause here? The relative clause is which cannot simply be obtained over the counter. And that clause gives information about prescription drugs. That's a plural noun, so we don't add S to the verb. Prescription drugs, which cannot simply be obtained over the counter, require a doctor's prescription in order to be purchased. So looking at all of these sentences, how do we identify relative clauses? Well, watch out for the relative pronouns who, which, that, where, when, etc. Once you identify a relative clause, check to see whether that clause comes between the subject and the verb. If it does, just ignore the clause. Look at the subject and decide whether it is singular or plural, and then use the correct form of the verb based.